Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Akansha Parimu. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Indian capital remains under smog blanket. Experts blame slow wind speed for pollution. Sindhi activists voice concern over Pakistani atrocities. State sponsor terrorism. And Sri Lanka's debt to China close to 20% of public external debt. And now for all the details. Indian capital New Delhi on Wednesday continued to suffer from thick smog with the air pollution remaining in the very poor category. Experts believe due to cold temperatures and calm winds pollutants are being accumulated in the atmosphere, deteriorating the air quality. The pollution level in India's capital, New Delhi, on Wednesday continued to remain in very poor category. With the onset of winters, the air pollution worsened as the city engulfed into thick air smog. Residents in New Delhi and the national capital region complained of irritation in eyes and said they are finding it hard to breathe due to the toxic air. The level of fine particles measuring 2.5 micrograms or PM 2.5 was 162 micrograms per cubic meter of air earlier in the day in the national capital region, Central Pollution Control Board data showed. This is more than two times above the 24-hour acceptable limit of 60 micrograms per cubic meter of air. Experts blame cold temperature for the deterioration of air quality, hoping the condition may improve by Thursday. The main reason for this deterioration was uh, the poor meteorological conditions which are not allowing uh, air pollutants to disperse in the atmosphere. Uh, wind speed during uh, daytime some wind is, winds are there but night time these winds become calm and because of that this accumulation of air pollutants is uh, there. We are expecting that uh, the air quality will remain in very poor category today uh, and tomorrow it will improve a little bit. Authorities have brought in several measures over the years to improve the situation including switching Delhi's fleet of public transport to cleaner fuel, spraying water on roads and controlling burning of firewood and waste. But experts say these measures need to be applied across cities and towns around New Delhi to effectively control pollution. An Israeli filmmaker's criticism of a film depicting the exodus of India's majority Hindu population from the Kashmir region in the 1990s has sparked an uproar in India and prompted an apology from the Israeli ambassador. Kashmiri pundits on Wednesday also staged a protest over the remarks. Israeli filmmaker Nadav Lapid's criticism of the film The Kashmir Files depicting the exodus of India's majority Hindu population from the Kashmir region has sparked an uproar in India and prompted an apology from the Israeli ambassador Naur Gilon. Lapid, who headed the jury at a government-organized film festival in India's Goa, said during Monday's closing ceremony that The Kashmir Files was a propaganda movie that had no place at a film festival. Many people accused him of dismissing the portrayal of the exodus of Hindus from Muslim-majority Kashmir. Naur Gilon, Israel's ambassador to India, in a series of tweets said that as a human being he feels ashamed and wants to apologize to the host for the bad manner in which we repaid them for their generosity and friendship. He added that he is no film expert but he knows that it's insensitive and presumptuous to speak about the historic events before deeply studying them and which are an open wound in India. Meanwhile, Kashmiri pundits on Wednesday staged a protest over Lapid's remarks and asked him to apologize to the entire community. They asked the government to convey in the strongest possible words its resentment towards the Israeli government. He has been anti-establishment, he has been anti-India. 
उसका सिलेक्शन एज चेयरमैन ऑफ जूरी कैसे हुआ तो इसकी तहकीकत होनी चाहिए सपोर्टर्स ऑफ इंडियन प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी एंड द रूलिंग बीजेपी had endorsed the movie on its release in march while supporters cheered and shouted slogans during screenings but some critics said the film may fan anti-muslim sentiment in the country they fear is being polarized along religious lines moving on a suicide bomber of tehreek e taliban pakistan rammed a police escort for a polio vaccination team in balochistan province on wednesday killing at least four people and wounding more than 30 The attack came just two days after the militants ended a ceasefire. The victims included a policeman, a woman, and a child, and some of the wounded were in a critical condition. Fifteen police officers were among the wounded, reports suggested. Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif condemned the attack and vowed to press on with the vaccination campaign. Although Pakistan kept relations with the Afghan Taliban during the long insurgency to drive western forces out of Afghanistan it has been fighting the TTP in its own borders for years Sindhi activists recently held a protest in Germany voicing concerns over the atrocities of Pakistan in Sindh province and its state policy of sponsoring terrorism They also condemned China's repeated moves to halt sanctions against Pakistan-based terror groups at the UN and other international forums. GSN Mutahida Mehz JSMM chairman Shafi Burfat along with other activists held a demonstration in Germany this week voicing concerns over atrocities of Pakistan in Sindh province and its state policy of sponsoring terrorism. In his speech Burfat accused the Pakistani army uses enforced disappearances extrajudicial killings and political repression as tools to silence voices of people in Sindh and Balochistan he also urged intervention by international community to stop exploitation of Sindh's natural resources by Pakistan and China terming Pakistan a terrorist state he highlighted its role in 2611 Mumbai terror attacks in 2008 that killed at least 166 people the activist also condemned China's repeated moves to halt sanctions against the accused Pakistani terrorists at the UN and other international forums in the unnatural state of Pakistan Sindh and Balochistan have been suffering from political oppression economic exploitation and worst national slavery for the past 75 years keeping the whole world in the dark and deceive deceiving the international community pakistan has always spearheaded the cultivation of islamic terrorist groups Sindhi activists have been long requesting the international community to take notice of crackdown and atrocities by Pakistani state and its security forces against innocent Sindhis for raising their voices. A survey released by International Organization for Migration has revealed that since the Taliban captured Afghanistan in August last year, the country's economy has undergone a deep crisis. The situation has led to acute food shortage. and pushed 97% of the country's population below the poverty line the international organization for migration in coordination with eu partnerships has said in a survey that since the taliban took over afghanistan the country's economy has undergone a deep crisis leading to an acute food shortage and pushing 97% of the country's population below the poverty line According to the survey severe food shortages are being experienced by more than half of Afghanistan's population as a result of drought and poor governance which has a negative impact on their livelihoods leaving many people in rural areas with few options for diversifying their sources of income Meanwhile the director of operations of the International Committee of the Red Cross ICRC has said that the US initiated sanctions imposed on the Taliban regime have undermined vital humanitarian aid supply he added it is key that all sanctions have humanitarian exemptions allowing aid organizations to be able to reach people in need moment uh, we are we are we are continuing to operate 
uh, I think one of the important challenges is indeed that the, the sanctions that have been uh, imposed, for example, the, the, the banking sector, and so that makes operations more difficult also for us. What is key is that in such sanction regimes there are humanitarian exemptions which allow humanitarian organizations such as the International Committee of the Red Cross to operate and to be able to reach people in need. Afghan people have also held protests to demand the release of the frozen assets which they say have led to the deteriorating humanitarian crisis. Before the Taliban seized power, Afghanistan had over 9 billion US dollars in central bank reserves outside of the country which includes 7 billion US dollars held in the US with the rest in Germany, the UAE, Switzerland and a couple of other countries. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's debt to China is now close to 20% of its public external debt as per a report published this week. The estimate made in the report is 10 to 15% higher than the calculations quoted by previous reports. The island nation is currently midst of debt restructuring after suffering the worst economic crisis since its independence in 1948. A report published this week by the China Africa Research Initiative CARI shows Sri Lanka owed Chinese lenders 7.4 billion US dollars by the end of the last year. The estimated calculation is nearly one fifth of the public external debt of the island nation. According to the report, the island nation's total external debt is 37.6 billion US dollars. Adding central bank foreign currency debt, Public external debt rises to 40.6 billion US dollars, out of which 22% is from Chinese creditors. As per the data collected by CARI, Export Import Bank of China and China Development Bank are the two largest Chinese lenders for Sri Lanka, accounting 4.3 billion US dollars and 3 billion US dollars respectively. The report highlighting China's role suggests the Asian superpower will play a major role in Sri Lanka's debt restructuring process. Apart from China, India and Japan are also the bilateral creditors for the island nation to restructure the debt. Sri Lanka has also secured staff level agreement for 2.9 billion US dollars with International Monetary Fund. But the funds are yet to come as IMF Boat is yet to approve the deal which hinges on financing assurances from creditors. Sri Lanka is grappling with its worst economic crisis since its independence, adding with recovery from COVID-19 which damaged the tourism in the island nation and remittance from overseas workers. Indian and the US Army personnel on Wednesday conducted disaster relief drills in India's Uttarakhand state as part of their ongoing joint military exercise, Yudabhyas. The exercise aims to facilitate both armies to share their wide experiences, skills and enhance their techniques. Indian and the US Army personnel on Wednesday conducted humanitarian assistance and disaster relief mock operations in the hilly area of Tapovan in India's Uttarakhand state as part of their ongoing 18th edition of the military exercise Yudh Abhyas. The US force is being represented by 2nd Brigade of the 11th Airborne Division, whereas Assam Regiment is representing India. Earlier in the ongoing exercise, both the armies participated in joint training for two weeks, which included unarmed combat, rock craft, trap shooting and logistic procedures. This exercise ka mukhya udesh dono desho ki senao ke har ek jawano ko har prakar ke hathiyaron mein markmanship banana taki hamara mudda one shot one kill ko pura kar sake taki kisi bhi mission ya firing ke dauran kisi beguna ki jaan na jaye. The exercise which is hosted alternatively by the US and India had begun on 19 November at foreign training node in Oli in Uttarakhand. The 17th edition of the exercise was held in Alaska. As per a statement by India's Defence Ministry, this exercise is designed to promote cooperation between the two militaries while sharing training, cultural exchanges and building joint operation skills. Bhutanese monks visited India's National Museum in New Delhi to pay respects to Buddha's relics on the last day of their tour of the country on Tuesday. The 24-member delegation was on an eight-day visit to India. 
Even though Buddhism has its roots in India, it is the state religion in Bhutan. Bhutan, wedged in the Himalayas between India and China, is the closest India has to an ally in South Asia, a region home to over 1.5 billion people but held back by bristling rivalries. India and Bhutan share a historic friendship and India has been the nation's largest donor for providing assistance towards Bhutan's development. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.